Okay, this is going to be a three card oracle questions for you. So get three questions out, get one question out, two, whatever you need. I'll put three cards down. We'll turn over one at a time and for your answer to yes, no, or maybe. And then I'll do a full data cross on each one. So I hope you like the video. If you do like the video, please do like it. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching. I am Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. You know, the thing to do here to really get the most out of this is to really get your question or questions, your issues, whatever you're dealing with, to the front of your mind. Put it out there, concentrate on it, meditate on it, put it out there and so hopefully we can catch it at this end and get some good answers for you. And you know you hear me say it time and time again, this is a perfect time to calm yourself, take a deep breath, let it out slow, maybe get yourself something to drink. Just really relax and settle back and get ready to make your pick. And sometimes the card that I've got in my head isn't the card that I pick at the last minute. Uh, so let's see how this goes for you. Okay, so I got these great cards and if you ever doubted that I'm a sucker for a great packaging of cards, then this will confirm it. So these cards are by famed artist Salvador Dali. He includes himself in uh, the cards and his wife, and they also include uh, examples of some of his artwork and other uh, artists uh, that uh, he felt were appropriate for the, for the interpretation. Uh, these cards were created uh, or were um, commissioned in 1973 for the uh, film uh, Live and Let Die. However, uh, Dolly's um, uh, price was, I guess, too much. So contract uh, negotiations broke down. And then finally, 10 years later, by 1984, Dolly completed the tarot deck, 78 cards, and had them published for the first time, limited edition. And now Tostin has re- um, uh, printed these cards in this amazing uh, box. So when I ordered them, I thought I'd get a box, you know, about this big. And when this thing came in the mail, I was totally shocked. They're not cheap. They're quite expensive. But anyway, so this is an amazing cover. This box is like a, a crushed velvet uh, kind of finish here. And it's just everything, everything, everything that gets me going about tarot card uh, containers, if you can't tell from my excitement. So, and then there's lots on the back here. It's in three different languages. It's in uh, Spanish, in German, and in English. And then the way this thing opens up, it's just like this. And once you get inside, you've got this amazing booklet uh, to describe uh, how uh, something about the cards and how to use them. The booklet is a full color, and then each page has three interpretations of the cards. When I say interpretations, I mean that's English, uh, German, and Spanish. So, um, lovely, lovely book, amazing. I mean, the price of the cards was, was the, the price that I paid for this was worth it if I only got this book. The one uh, problem I have with it, however, is that it's beautiful, but the first part of this uh, book is uh, a lot that talks about uh, Dolly and how the cards came to be. And as you can see, it's on this dark purple with this gold printing, and I can barely barely make it out. I'm going to have to use my magnifying glass eventually to read it, but uh, not today. And uh, so I've had these for a few days and I've been uh, practicing with them. I haven't tried to decipher this yet. It's just too dark and I've got uh, vision problems that make it just even more complicated. But when you finally get to where they're talking about the cards themselves, it's fantastic because you have a white background, easy to read. It's a little small, but still it's easy to read because they've got everything on one page. And uh, amazing, amazing, amazing um, I'm so glad I got this. It was all well. Now the cards, look at how they're displayed. The cards themselves come in this really cool gold foil kind of, it's a typical box for tarot cards, but just the design is terrific. And then the cards themselves, I'll take them out here, put the box back, and well, I'll keep this out. And then I'll put this away. But I'll show you the cards quickly um, before we go any further. And I guess I'll have to leave this here so we have something to, to, to look at. And then uh, here, when you get into the inner sanctum, there's no more uh, instructions inside here. It's just this cool uh, foiled uh, box. And then the cards themselves are terrific. The back is a really beautiful 
uh, foil looking design. It's not foil, but it's a gold design. And this just simply says Dolly over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again. That's the back of the cards. The cards themselves are amazing. So, like I say, they have included some of uh, uh, snippets of Dolly's work and some other artists. And if I was more studious, I would have really studied that and have something to tell you uh, more concrete. But um, they're just absolutely beautiful. On the Magician, you can see uh, Salvador Dali is the face of the Magician. If I find it quickly, I'll show it to you. And on the uh, Empress, that's his wife, uh, Gala, but, uh, which I don't see right away. But um, they're terrific cards. I can't wait to use them. And so there's where we're at. You know, I, I make these uh, this mess of the cards like this uh, so that uh, you can get a chance to see different cards more completely than just the few uh, cards that a, a, a reader might pull up in, the, in a reading and um, and enjoy that. And then like I always say, if you're working with someone, I always think it's a good idea to have them spread the cards out like this to kind of get their energy into the cards and then you know um, that they've got a, a stake in the, in the reading. So Salvador Dali amazing, worth every penny I paid for these. Okay, we'll take a minute for a little meditation, just a second. Okay, so this will be a three card each pick the data cross finish for each of those three cards for you today. One, two, three. Get your questions ready. Take a deep breath. Let it out slow. If you need to stop the tape to get yourself situated or get a beverage, that's a good idea. Three cards. One two, and three. Okay. So pick your card. One, two, three. One, two, three. Remember, you can stop the tape. Get your idea in the front of your mind. One, two, three. One, two, and three. And we'll reveal these cards one at a time, then we'll do a six-card dyadic cross to finish. So if we chose number one, this is one, two, three, four, five. Okay, this is abuse of power. So swords are truth, justice, rules, and law. This five of swords, one, two, three, four, five, is an abuse of power. So this tells us that someone has taken advantage of those uh, truth, justice, rules, or law. It could even be you. But um, this is a signifier of this reading, and this is a no card if you chose this one. So this is no. If you chose number two... This card is the star. This is a great big yes card, and the star is just as it implies, you know, just the shining uh, brilliance of, of, of this issue, of this situation. It is the star. You are the star. So we chose number two. That's a big, bright uh, yes card. We chose number three. Then we've got the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of swords. And the eight of swords is feeling a little trapped. Um, and again, this is all truth, justice, rules, and law. So this is feeling a little trapped, a little um, c confined. And uh, But the fact is, is that you can move out of that. If you just look around, consider the landscape, and uh, you can move out of that. But this is a no card. So we've got a no, a yes, and a no. No, yes, and no. We'll do a full dyadic cross on this one. So I'll need five more cards to help define this no card, this abuse of power, the swords, five of swords, kind of an abuse of power. It's interesting, if you look at this very carefully, there's a very seductive female figure right here, just at the edge of the card. And this uh, fellow is looking very, uh, you know, knowingly at that, at that woman. And he's gathered up his swords, and uh, he's got a couple that are left behind. Interesting. So five cards. Gonna be one, two, three, four, and five right there. Sometimes the cards are just too anxious to jump out, and I'm just not attracted to that kind of energy. So this abuse of power is challenged by the Queen of Wands. 
So wands are actions, uh, forward motion, plans. Queen of Wands is very much in charge of her plans. She's going to get this thing done. So it's interesting that we have this seductive female here, this fellow who's uh, exercising some sort of an abuse of his power, and that is challenged by this woman who is in complete control of the actions uh, that uh, surround her. So that's an interesting dynamic. The base of this reading, then, is this Queen of Cups. The Queen of Cups, is this is compassion, emotion, and uh, so this queen has really got her hand on the pulse of what's happening here emotionally, okay? So we'll go over this in a minute to make sure it's an understood um, thought. Uh, the past of this reading, then, is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of Pentacles. And the Nine of Pentacles is really, Pentacles are, are value, they're worth, they can be money, but the Nine of Pentacles represents an overabundance of that value, very confident in your worth. And this fellow is just showing us that confidence in his value and his worth. He's got some lovely art here. He has the, a nice uh, pet uh, parrot, it looks like here. So yeah, this is the Nine of Pentacles. Lots of value is how we came, came into the situation. The sky of this reading then is this Knight of Cups. So this is a very interesting, very introspective Knight of Cups. We have a figure of, of a head here, and this Knight is kind of in the head of that a figure with the emotions, compassion, very strong Knight. Okay, so this is the sky of this reading, this Knight of Cups. And then the final outcome for this dyadic cross, with this final card right here, is going to be this great big ace of pentacles, great big offer of value. And so if we break it down, so we come into this, you're represented by this five of swords. This is kind of abuse of power. So it's either you, and it could be unknowingly, or it could be knowingly, um, or someone um, in your circle. And uh, we notice that this uh, fella is really gazing upon this beautiful figure of a woman uh, just on the edge here. The challenge to it then is this queen of wands. So this abuse of power, this could be uh, a dynamic between a man and a woman here. The challenge is this uh, queen of wands. So it just implies that this a woman here is in full control of the plans of the situation. Okay, that's the challenge to this abuse of power. The base of this reading with this Queen of Cups is understanding that the uh, the uh, emotion that all these cards are bringing to us are at the high, almost the highest level of control by this Queen. The past of this reading with this Nine of Pentacles tells us that we brought into this situation all the worth that were required. We possess that already. And then with this Nine of Cups in the sky here, this is really the fellow who's going to fight for that emotion. This almost seems to be a romantic situation. So it, I, I hesitate to, to place it like that, but it just does kind of lean that way. With this Nine of Cups really fighting for the compassion, for the emotion in the head of this figure of a woman here. And then the final outcome of this whole thing with this big offer of value is that even though this is a, a no card, just kind of telling us no, don't act on this. Someone else has the upper hand. There's a lot of emotion involved. There's a lot of worth that we come into this that we risk. And we want to make sure that we don't get into our own head or into the head of someone else with all this emotional baggage, really, because there's a lot of value to be had once we stand back and recognize it. So this is a no card. This is a caution for whatever it is, this uh, question uh, that you're dealing with. Okay. If we chose the number two card, and that's what we're going to get at right now. We'll incorporate these right back into the deck, and the signifier then is the star. A nice yes card, a big yes card. The star is a showy kind of an, an energy, okay? She wants us to know that uh, she's got, she's in control of the situation, and uh, this star is is soaking up all the attention uh, that is uh, in this uh, in this issue. Okay, so this is a yes card. I feel compelled to actually just pull the cards right off the top of the deck for this one for some reason. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So the challenge to this star then is this. How many do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of uh, swords. And this is a nightmare. Now, the, there's a little divine guidance here, but this uh, issue brings with it some sort of a big caution and even though this is a yes card, this is telling us that we really have to be careful about how we move forward on this. This is a, these so far these are very complicated readings. The base of this reading then is going to be this six 
of swords, swords of truth, justice, rules, and law, okay? So this shining star here could be challenged by one of those issues, truth, justice, rules, and law. It's going to make this thing a complicated situation. And uh, But we came into this moving from one more troubled place into a, a quieter, uh, less troubled place. The past of this reading, with this Three of Pentacles, um, the Three of Pentacles is, is typically putting something together for public display. It's a collaboration. It's working with uh, some other important elements to make this thing um, okay for public display. So that it blends in perfectly with this star who's going to be out there for everyone to see. So this value right here, this collaboration of value is what brought us to this. We have to be cautious about the uh, issues involved and um, then the sky of this reading with that star. There's going to be this Three of Cups. Now, it's very interesting that we're repeated a three here because those are just the beginnings of the journey. It was a little bit of imbalance, but this Three of Cups is speaking to us of celebrations. So this is collaboration. Uh, we can aim for some sort of an emotional uh, collaboration, some sort of a celebration. I want to put this right under here. Remember, this is not part of our reading. And then the final outcome for this Yes card is this Judgment. OK, so we we have to know that if we go with that, yes, we have the caution of the uh, truths that are involved here. Uh, we have the value and the compassion and uh, there will be judgment in the end. And that may be the very reason why we need to go with the yes to get to that judgment. Judgment isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it can be a caution. So we're the star. We have a nightmare of challenges. We came from one place into another. It was a bit more tranquil. We have the value and the collaboration. We have all the pieces we need to make this thing happen. Uh, we have to consider the emotional consequences because there will be judgment for that. Okay. Now we'll go on and incorporate these back into the deck and go on to our third choice, if that was your card. And that was a no card. And that is... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of swords feeling confined by those truths that justice, the rules, and that law. Okay? We need five cards to work this out. So we'll start right here. One, two, three, four. You know what? I want it from right under here. And five. Okay, these cards have done what they can for us. So, we are right here with this Eight of Swords, feeling a bit confined by the rules around the situation. Uh, okay, and this is challenged by the Emperor. Really, something or someone who has all the authority to make this thing happen. And that's a little bit overpowering for us. The base of this reading is this El Diablo, the Devil. Okay, ill intention. Not going about the thing with the best of intentions at all. Okay? The past of this reading, then is the world. Okay, so this is the completion of a cycle. So we got to, look at the face in this picture right here. So we got to the completion of the cycle, which means that something else is about to begin, and it's something that's brought with us a confined feeling um, of, of the, the majesty uh, of what's going on. In the sky of this reading, with this King of Wands, it's funny I should speak of majesty, because this King of Wands, Wands are truth, or I'm sorry, are forward movement, uh, plans, uh, issues, uh, and so this King of Wands is in complete control of all of that. And then the likely outcome of this uh, no card is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of wands. And the eight of wands are lots of issues occurring at the same time. Could be issues by rote, could be issues by, uh, by, uh, demand or by, uh, uh, conflict is what I want to say here. But, uh, so yeah, the caution in all of this is, uh, the issues that it'll bring up. And even if you get to the point where you're challenged by those issues, listen, we're challenged by issues every time, every day. We have to go through them one at a time to get to the end. But this is a no card. So this eight of swords feeling, uh, confined, um, challenged by all the, um, this emperor who's in complete control of everything. <coughs> so it may feel confined against our will. The base of this with its ill intentions that seem to support all of this, uh, the world card is the end of one cycle and the beginning of something else. So this this ill feeling uh, has come to us at the beginning of something that's just started. King of Wands, these plans are very strong, and uh, there's a lot of issues associated with it. So yeah, this is a no card if you want to try to avoid some of this. So that's what we have today for our three-card draw. 
So was it useful? Did that hit home? Did that answer your questions for you? If it didn't, maybe you just need to concentrate on it a little bit. Or it may not be for you today at all. It could be that this is a message for someone that's close to you or someone that you're going to run into, into or someone that you care about. Or, or again, it may, it may not hit home at all, and that's fine. Just put it aside, and uh, we got to spend some time together. And I like that. I'm Mark, My Journey Through Tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by. We'll do it again. Ciao for now.